Let us talk today about judging. Do you know that every single thing in the world boils down to judging? You see, basically, there are only three possibilities. The first is we don't judge anyone. The second is we judge everyone. Now, there have been many, many Nobel Prizes won on something called game theory. Game theory effectively, if you had to boil it down into more Jewish mysticism terms, it boils down to either we judge everyone, and that's really a defense mechanism, as well as an anger, jealous, hate mechanism. You know, it's amazing that the people who are actually the greatest evil people, Hitler being the best example, but even the radicals, whether it's a very radical right or radical left group, the people that use the worst means to achieve their ends are the ones that judge everybody the most unfavorably. Because when we are judging another, we are not really the judge. We are really the executioner. We have a jealous hate, and the judgment is only there to justify the malicious intent. Listen very carefully to what I'm saying. The judgment is not the reason why we are doing the evil we are doing. We are doing the evil because we are jealous of the person. We are jealous of their love. Exactly what Dumbledore told Harry, that why was he who mustn't be named so evil? Because he was jealous of love. We all need love. And when we feel that it quite correctly usually that's everybody's been bullied but if we take that personal and we believe now that we're unlovable because that's what all of bullying all of anti-semitism all this anti-west it all has the same undertone which is you are unlovable you are bad therefore you are unlovable who makes these statements those who themselves feel unlovable and therefore they don't want you to feel lovable because they don't want you to have that joy that's the whole story but there's a third way and this is very very important I remember I had with my good friend Herschel Friedman, who's uh, uh, the uh, engineer of my show, Soul Talk. We had a radio show together, and he once asked me this question on the radio when we were discussing this thing. So, okay, well, what does that mean? So do I not judge anyone? So I told him, judge without judging. In other words, there is a reality in which I look at reality and I say something is right and something is wrong. It doesn't mean that I'm coming from a perspective of hate. And that's where you can tell the difference. For example, one of the very famous teachings the Baal Shem Tov said, and in fact, Jung, whose teachings came from the Baal Shem Tov, his whole thing is about mirrors. The Baal Shem Tov said that every single human being is your mirror. You know, whatever you see in someone else, whatever you see in the world, sometimes I even do this exercise. If I want to know myself, I say, what are people like? And if I come up with a negative, that is my negative, because why would I even think that? Why would I say that? Let's say a person is a thief. He thinks everybody's a thief. Let's say a person's a kind person. They think everybody's a kind person. So the point is, if you have a negative judgment call on others, that is actually something that you have in yourself. You are subconsciously denying it. You are seeing it others both because you are afraid of it, and you are generally anxious usually, and therefore jealous, and therefore destructive. But, and here's a very important but, that doesn't mean that we always are in a negative state if we are judging. There are times that the reason we're judging is to help someone else. I have a friend, Yuval, he says, you know, when it comes to me, I don't mind. People can, if can you excuse my French crap on me, it doesn't bother me. It really is. He's a very spiritual, special person. However, when it comes to somebody else, I'll always defend them. So in other words, here you're not judging someone to put someone else down. And therefore the Torah, the same Torah that tells us very clearly, you may not murder. The whole idea of not murdering comes from the Torah. Unfortunately, we're seeing it with the liberal left. Any radical group basically that doesn't have a biblical foundation of right and wrong. So they very quickly become into, we're right, they're wrong, we can get rid of them. However, and this is a very, very important, however, when an individual has true love in their heart, so the same love in your heart creates that you hate those that are hate.